So I try to interact with children's homes. I try to network mostly with Lifeline and also other organizations that I can't actually, um, I can't list now, but I do a lot of social, of social work jobs during my spare time because I am, I, I always say I'm a social worker, not by profession. It is what I love doing. I did that for 10 years and it actually is fulfilling. I still do it today in my job. I do it when I'm in the mediation room for divorcing couples because I love building families. Uh, today, I just want to speak about a few things. When I was told uh, that there are three speakers, I asked what specifically, what areas must I focus upon. The lady said, just the art of being a woman. It's beautiful because what I had in mind is an art. Do I have to be artistic? What, do, what am I supposed to talk about? But basically, it simply means what defines a woman? I believe that's what we can actually focus on today. Two aspects of things without wasting time that came to my mind and that resonates with me is that a woman is somebody that can be defined with two traits. I look at the strength. Further, I also focused on grace. I will tell you why I picked those two elements without wasting your time. Women today are defined as people who are able to rise above the adversities. We are defined as people who are able to lift others up. We are defined as people that can assist the whole community. We are defined as people who are able to stand even after those adversities because we require strength in our lives. Where do you draw? Where do you draw that strength? Where do you draw it from? Most people, they actually have some higher power which they associate with. As I mentioned myself as a Christian, I draw that strength from prayer. I draw the strength from reading the word of God. I draw the strength from networking with other women who are wonderful. Somebody that is not going to give me a negative energy. Somebody that will say, it is okay, I'm standing in prayer with you. Somebody that will say, I'm able to assist you in an area where I care. Some sister that will say to me, if it's looking after your children for an hour, I will do it. Mm -hmm. You find that if we cannot do that as women, we are failing each other. Mm -hmm. So when you have strength, make sure that you use it towards the right channel. Strength can be misused, as we all know. Other people use their strength to manipulate. Mm -hmm. Other people use their strength to change the atmosphere in the workplace. There are those who decide when they enter a room, they're just going to gossip or they're going to complain. There are those who decide that instead of speaking positively about the workplace, their bosses, or even their colleagues, they'd rather ill speak of them. You are using the very same strength, but in a negative way. I always say, let's try by all means. In fact, we have to make that decision to say I'm going to use my strength in a negative light. That is an art of being a woman. I've actually ex explained that you are able to rise above your adversities. Why did I mention that? It's because as women today, we may choose to actually say, yes, I went through hard stuff. I went through any kind of turbulences in life, but you have to decide. Nombilo said you are not a victim. Don't dwell there. Do not dwell in that state of being a victim because it's going to destroy your future. We are given a day each day so that we can make choices. Some of those choices is for you to say, I leave the victim mentality, even though I went through that, even though I may have come from a background that disadvantaged me yesterday. Today you have resources, today you are given opportunities as women, and you must take those opportunities and make use of them. That requires a woman who will say, no more victim mentality. I'm a victim. It was a and said, we've got to be victorious. Secondly, I define a woman as somebody that is graceful. Why, Why do we need those two components as women? One, somebody that is graceful is somebody who has an ability to portray kindness to other people. In as much as you would have faced the adversities, you need to have a composure that gives radiance. 
You need to be able to have compassion for others. You need to share your compassion and extend it, even though yes, your yesterday was also rough. It doesn't mean that you must actually be harder on the next person. Even though you experienced hardship, you can share it with kindness to say, don't go there because basically you will not come out the way you want to be. Let us portray the grace because it is also the same ability that will help us while we are expressing our, our, our opinions, we will do so gracefully. While we have the voice to change or to share what we feel, but we will do it gracefully as women. We will do it with kindness. And today I see most of women who are placed in leadership roles losing that ability to be kind and to be soft. I don't know why. It defines one element or trait that to me it's still part of this masterpiece of a woman. The profound beauty of a woman is somebody who has the ability to portray the strength and grace. Is somebody who will lead and when they are leading they will lead with compassion. They will portray the empathy in their employees. Why do we need that? We all know that women go through a lot, right? So imagine if I'm not able to sense your mood today. I'm expecting you to be productive. I'm saying this because most of my employees are, are, are actually women, so I know. Some days they are bubbly, some days they are very down. So you've got to observe, and as a leader, because I believe we are all leaders here, You've got to have the sensitivity, empathy. You've got to make sure you nourish your soft skills as well. Let's not only acquire the hardcore skills that make us to be productive, let's also acquire the soft skills because they help us to become better leaders, especially as women. That's why there are women who are better leaders compared to men. It's because of that ability. <laughs> Let us ensure that we carry both in your pairs, in your purses. Acquire skills of strength, acquire soft skills that will enable you to show kindness. I want all of us in the room when we get out to exude both strength and kindness. I'm just going to read a verse. As I said, I'm a child of God. Sometimes it's difficult to actually detach from the word of God. As I'm closing, I want us to read a few verses in Proverbs 31. I'll read it first. It says from, from, from 19, I'll start there. She stretches out her hand to the distaff, and her hands holds the spindle. She extends the hand to the poor. She reaches out her hands to the needy, she is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. That shows royalty. Her husband is known in the gates. That means you don't speak ill of your partners, whether married or unmarried. You build as a woman, so your words are. They can either build or destroy. Mm. When she sits among the elders of the land, she makes linen garments and she sells them productivity. Mm. And she supplies sashes for the merchants. She's an entrepreneur. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth. Sorry. My phone is failing. It went. Sorry. I think I was in verse 26. She opens her mouth with wisdom. Let us watch the words. Let us watch our words. They can build somebody. They can also destroy someone. But this one says she opens her mouth with wisdom. She thinks before she talks. And the law of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of the idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. I know this is one area of 
as I emphasized earlier on, as women who are career or, dream or, or, or ambitious, sometimes we actually lack in that duty of nourishing our children, nourishing in every way. We fail to cook those nutritious meals because we are busy, right? Mm. Someone will relate with that. Even if you have a helper, try and monitor what your children are eating every day. Try and monitor what is in their lunch boxes. Because that may actually cause you to, to, to have stress when they are ill. It will actually delay you when your children are not flourishing. Mm. Her children rise up and call it blessed. That means they are proud. Her husband also. He prays at her, saying, Many daughters have done worthily, but thou excellest them all. Race is deceitful, and beauty is in vain, but a woman that fears the Lord shall be praised. Mm -hmm. Therefore, women who are all here, coming from different backgrounds, I encourage us to nourish ourselves. I encourage us to watch the mental health because today most women are battling. I did a study in my master's which was actually looking at depression and dismissal and how do we as lawyers actually encourage the employers to support these depressed women. I might have uh, attended on depression but there are many many mental illnesses, bipolar, you can name it, I'm not a psychiatrist, so I don't know all of them, but I looked at the stats which show that women are actually suffering more than men when it comes to the mental health. Mm -hmm. The reason being is so obvious, we multitask a lot. We try to be there for somebody else and we fail to feel ourselves first. It's very important while I'm, I'm actually portraying the beauty of strength and kindness, and grace that you also ensure that you strengthen yourself. You have to make sure that you are balanced, your well-being is natural. Eat those nutritious meals, exercise regularly to avoid running dry yourself while you are trying to execute all your rules excellently and failing yourself. I would say we need to ensure that we are strong and we will be able to radiance as these beauties that I see today. Thank you so much. Thank you.